Hi. What's up, teacups? Have you ever been sat on your couch binge watching your new favorite show as you open the box of your extra large cheese crust quattro for Maji pizza? Hmm, I can smell it right now. How does that first slice taste? Pretty damn good, I'm sure. It makes you grab another. And this time, you make sure you really enjoy it. It tastes even better. You grab a third slice and repeat. But by the time you get to the last couple of slices, you start to feel a churning in your tummy. Your stomach is brimming with four types of melted cheese. Suddenly, you're not feeling so good. And now the taste of cheese is mixed with the taste of stomach acid as you try to control the burps swimming their way up your throat and into your mouth. This is an example of marginal utility. Let's look at a graph. First, let's look at total utility. So the x-axis is the number of pizza slices, and the y-axis is the benefit, or utility, we get from consuming each slice. Total utility shows the satisfaction we get from consuming each pizza slice. As you can see, the first slices make you happy. They're positive and satisfying, but as you get full, they're less satisfying. And eventually, an extra slice won't give you any extra satisfaction at all. Now, marginal utility illustrates the additional benefit a person gets from consuming one more unit of something. In this case, one more slice of pizza. This is how it's shown on a graph. When the total utility starts to curve down, you are beyond the peak of satisfaction, so consuming more won't make you any more satisfied. As you can see, the first slice gave a satisfaction rating of 4, pretty good. The second gave a satisfaction rating of 5. So one additional satisfaction level. And the third slice was our peak satisfaction at 5.5, only half a satisfaction level more than that previous slice. The fourth slice gave us the same satisfaction as the third slice. It's here where things turn south. Consuming another slice puts marginal utility in the negative. The optimal time to stop grabbing for the next slice is when the marginal utility line reaches zero. An additional slice of pizza will not provide additional satisfaction. It can actually do the opposite. We can apply marginal utility to pretty much every aspect of our life. So it's good to keep it in mind. It can save us time, money, and be good for our health. For example, it can apply to things we buy. Maybe we want to live in a bigger house. Our current house is feeling a little cramped. We can't even fit our new decorative Rocky Balboa sculpture inside our living room slash dining room. So we go on homesrus.com or whatever and start perusing properties for rent. Let's say in terms of marginal utility, one unit is one square foot. Our current home is 800 square feet. We need to decide how many more square feet we need to optimize our happiness. We may see something twice as big. This would allow us to have an entire room dedicated to our Rocky Balboa statue. We could even put it in a mini boxing ring and a charcuterie board. However, this property will cost twice as much as our current one. The rent increase and extra cleaning may limit our happiness. After the initial excitement wears off, it may actually result in unhappiness. Luckily, there's a property that's 1,000 square feet. It even has a little nook in the living room that's perfect for your Rocky Balboa statue. And it only costs 20% more than your current home. Moving to this property may result in you being at the peak on that marginal utility graph. You can sit back on your futon and admire your statue without breaking the bank. It's very satisfying. Marginal utility should also be considered when we work out. For every unit of exercise we do, whether it's a lift of a heavy thing, running a kilometer, or an hour of disco dancing, we need to make sure we are optimizing its utility. If we do too much too fast, it may not be good for us, but if we stop when we're at the peak benefit, we'll get stronger day by day. If we do too much, we may get injured, meaning we have to heal and recover. And that's sad. Okay, let's think about how marginal utility can save us time. A lot of us spend time doing things that require a lot of energy when we're in fact pretty tired and not particularly productive. Maybe we have a bunch of work to get done, and for the first few hours we make good progress. We feel good and the coffee is doing its thing. But for every hour after that, our energy depletes and the quality of our output drifts from pretty good to atrocious. We're basically wasting time. Even though we may feel obligated to continue, it's often best to stop working, rest, and reset before starting a new chunk of work units. This can result in the reduction of the amount of time we spend working because the hours we do spend working are super productive. And that's good for everyone.
Yep. So next time you're doing anything, ever, ask yourself, have I gone too far or not far enough? Have I reached the optimal benefit or has the margin of utility already dipped into the negative? Anyway, I gotta go dust my Rocky Balboa sculpture. Please subscribe. See you later, teacups.